Winter is coming. Winter is here. Oh, winter is here. Yeah. <laughs> hey, guys. Uh, in this episode, we want to talk about uh, what we did here at the Happy Place Homestead to prepare for winter. We started months ago. Bulking up. Bulking up. Yep. I think we all are bulking up, unfortunately. But uh, we had a lot of things that we did. And so we want to go kind of basically go through the list of all the things that we did to prepare for winter this year. Because I think... This is probably the most, the best we've been prepared. Uh, Yeah, maybe so. I think so. All right. So we're going to go through the list. So first. Wood. Wood. And and more wood. Yes. Wood, wood, and more wood. We we did that from the very, I mean, we started that in the summer, obviously, really. Well, what happened, um, traditionally, we would do a little bit of cutting of firewood, um, and then we would order wood in yeah, from yeah. various places. There's a place down the road I do a lot of work with, Kleiss uh, Equipment. They <clears throat> are the people I got the chainsaws from, and mm-hmm. I have a love-hate relationship with my chainsaws. And they it's were the true. people we bought the wood splitter from when we came here about five years ago. And so every year I would do a little bit of that, and then I would buy this wood from places like Kleiss and the like, and they would bring in cords of wood, uh, dump it in a huge pile, and then we would stack it. And often we would stack it in the garage, and we'd stack it around the property. But this year, uh, Kleiss had stopped selling wood, and we decided that we have so much. And the reason we have so much wood is because people would um, come here, and we would clear all this land, and now we have about five mountains of logs. And throughout the summer, I just chainsawed and cut, and the boys came, and we split wood, and we stacked. So And we did build another... Uh, we another woodshed another woodshed because um well i think we have a video for that so I we do so. have yeah but it was we and we end up filling that so we did yeah. it was so nice to um to have uh this extra woodshed because we didn't want to put things in the garage which i want to talk about in a second okay. but first the other thing that we did to prepare for the winter was our barn now our barn was delivered a couple winters ago, a couple springs ago. Yeah. But last year it was a pain in the butt because the way it, the slope of the of the roof happens, it ended up dumping right in front of the doors, and so it almost became inaccessible. Even though we had animals out there last year, it was really hard to access that, and it's still going to be an yeah. issue this year. But we have hopefully we're going to stay on top of that better. But um, for the barn, there was a couple things we had to do. We had to clean out the one side because uh, we we had hay in there. We needed to put more hay in there. So we had to clean out the one side, and we wanted to clean out our garage. But uh, another thing we did was on the other side, we fixed a couple spots because the goats were jumping over the fence we had uh, where we had our food stored. And so right. we had to fix that. But the big thing with the barn and the whole area is fencing. Yeah. <laughs> that, I think, is going to be... All right, that's our, what is that, our thorn in the side, that's our nemesis, that's yeah. just going to be our problem. Well, the thing, though, is that we, we decided to do a lot of work. We filmed it last year. You saw on the Happy Place Homestead show uh, this saga with fencing. Well, the saga continued, and a year later, we still are trying to deal with Sebastian, yeah. our escape artist. Um, <clears throat> but we, I think we got it fixed, actually, this last time. <laughs> Every time I say that, then I look out... <laughs> And there's, you know, yeah. Sebastian wandering around. But I think we did get it fixed this time. I think we did pretty good. Yeah. So it's just been constant reinforcing the, the weaker areas. Right. So that's been an ongoing saga. Yeah. And we will continue that But that was update. important to have that taken care of yeah. for winter because I think we have a, sh- a goat that's pregnant. And the last thing we want is them to be wandering around and not protected during the winter. Because mm-hmm. while it's not as cold as the Dakotas and some of the places, you know, in the United States that get subarctic level, levels of, uh, of cold, uh, we have a lot of snow. Mm-hmm. And uh, it's easy for uh, an animal to get kind of trapped. And, and so we wanted to make sure that they had a dry place. And, um, and, you know, it's interesting, though. The animals, they are geared up for their climate. So what's fascinating about, about sheep, goats, um, I don't know if it's the same for cows, but I would think so, is that there's an enzyme released, I think, uh, when they eat, which warms them from the inside out, right. which is so fascinating That's really to me. That's really cool. Yeah, it's kind of uh, like menopause. It's like uh, <laughs> menopause on a constant basis for them, yeah. but they eat. Whereas, like right now, I'm on fire yeah. and I'm not eating. I'm I have menopause, 
And I'm also on fire, but it's probably because I'm standing right next, next to the, the fire. <laughs> you have this thick coat. And I'm wearing a sweater. But I want to talk about <clears throat> dry. You had said keeping the animals dry. Yeah. And uh, that reminded me of the chicken coop because that was another yep. thing we did this summer was we we extended our chicken coop and added a yard, a covered yard to it. Right. And But the problem we've noticed early on, as soon as fall really kicked into gear, was that uh, the ground within the chicken yard is too low. So all the water just flooded right. and it became a pool almost. And so we need to add to that. But this is and my frustration with winter is that the chickens, I wanted them in the chicken coop for the winter because they make a mess of the barn. And now they're not in the chicken coop because the yard is a mess. So, I mean, it's just, it's an ongoing saga. Anybody who does any type of home studying probably realizes it's just one thing after another. You just, you think you get something fixed and it's not right. You have right. to keep tweaking. It's a constant struggle of tweaking and fixing and perfecting. Now, let's talk about animals, though, was food. We had to, we wanted to stock up yeah. and so that we felt prepared. Let's get a lot of this. So, one was grain. We needed to get grain for the, the goats and the sheep and the pig and the chickens. And so, we do have a local place that we like to go to. Uh, JJ Feed. Did, yeah, he's a lo I, I, we love supporting local farms and local industry. And so he's there, it's fresh. And so we were able to stock up uh, yep. and just fill up the car. It we've been going there for many years. Yeah. And, uh, uh, you know, we've tried a number of different things with feed. Uh, feed for us is generally speaking supplemental. And what I mean by this, predominantly they're they're eating grass. They're grass-fed the, animals. Be, that's yeah, what, yeah. That's that's what, what we try to get. For, so yeah. that's why we have sheep and uh, and goats. They'll eat all the poison ivy and the leaves and the branches of of, uh, of things. Of and branches then, of wisteria bushes that they're <laughs> I know. not supposed to that's eat. That's true. Uh, chickens, uh, the like. But when it comes to winter again, because obviously the snow has covered it all, uh, we do get the hay. We order that in. Mm -hmm. um, we ordered a lot this year. We got year. a lot. Yeah, a that lot truck came in full. It that was, was awesome. Huge. Though. Yeah. And uh, and then feed. And so those two things will keep us through the winter. To be honest, I think that it goes from for us October. I mean, it's about. Six months, half the year, we we have to be prepared. To, yeah. While it may not, we mm -hmm. may not need it entirely. We have to be prepared for the possibility of including supplemental grains and right. hay and the stuff. Right, the hay especially, because right? Because the grass is. There's like no a... telling. So mm -hmm. we we just entered December. And uh, just until the other day, there was still grass on the ground right. that mm -hmm. the animals could access. But unfortunately, uh, I think now, from now until maybe even March or April, we won't we yeah, won't really need the hay, right? see the the grass. The so. thing is, the the guy who brought the hay, I met him a couple of years ago. He is a mailman, and he delivered mail. And I don't yeah. know why. Wow, I just was carrying cool. on. A, which normally, again, I don't just carry on conversations with mail people, but. But this particular guy mm -hmm. was bringing up stuff we were talking. He must have seen me doing something, and he said that he also has a little farm. And I said, I'm looking for hay. And long and the short of it was, he's like, I can sell you hay. And I'm thinking, my gosh, this is great. So for two years now, I've gotten this hay from this guy, <laughs> and it's so good. Mm -hmm. But what a random conversation. That's the kind of thing about living in, um, I think, rural areas <laughs> is that so many people <clears> – <throat> If they're not involved in it directly, they know somebody is who can help you out. And I love that about the homesteading community is mm -hmm. that there's a lot of back and forth and help. Actually, funny enough, one of the things, too, that we got prepared to to not use was the tractor. And uh, <laughs> I got we got it going, and now right. it's parked. But um, mm -hmm. funny enough, on social media, I'm on this page for 4 to 8 ends. And uh, it's a whole bunch of nerds just talking about yeah. their tractor. Mm -hmm. And, uh, like, I love that about the community of homesteaders and people who love, uh, you know, tractors or, or the like. And we can just sit and nerd out together. And, and if you don't know it, somebody else does. And it's, uh, like, it's just a place to share information. I love it. So I, when you said tractor, I thought you were going to talk about your snowblower. I don't though, even want to talk we, about. I hate that thing. We just got that re-delivered with the, the it was the, the lawnmower tractor that has the snowblower. But it's a pretty big deal. Like you would think it's going to be perfect. Yeah, but it's, the problem is, it's, and too, it, it's too front heavy. <laughs> It, the problem is it's horrible. It never works. <laughs> it's never worked right. It it has a monster snowblower thing in it, but the problem is the wheels spin. And you know, I know what you're thinking. Well, you you need to weight down the tires. Duh, I have. We've done that, and it we've doesn't done, work. You, yeah. you name mm -hmm. it, we've done it. It's just 
I don't I know what the deal is. Yeah. The, the snow here. Yeah, I was thinking maybe it's the quality of the snow. Or maybe maybe I'm trying to drive that thing like a bat out of hell, and I think that somehow or another I'm just going to get done with this as fast as I do the lawn. <laughs> But I, all I'm saying is I hate it. Yeah, so. See, we live in Syracuse. We're north of Syracuse. So people in Syracuse say, yeah, we get a lot of snow, but we don't get nearly as much snow as those people a little north of us. Those people a little north of us, that's us. That's, that's us. That's who they're talking about. So we average about 120 inches of snow a year, even though I don't think we've actually seen that in the years that we've lived here. Well. This is a good start so far. But dealing with snow, preparing for winter is a big deal. And... Uh, snow blower is a nice idea, but we did put the blade on the on the four wheeler, right. so that and that proved to be useful that the other was, day. That yep. was pretty good. See, tr see, traditionally, I'll I'll try the blade on the four wheeler, but again, the tires, the, yeah, the tires, and so you right. inevitably have like two or three kids having to push you on yeah. the equipment, yeah. which is anti. So in the end, in the end, every year. We get a guy that comes yeah, and, that and just plows. Mm -hmm. um, and so what I'm doing is, again, we're back to the word supplemental. I'm just trying to supplemental, uh, supplementally uh, kind of contribute to cleaning out a few extra places that right, the truck Right, right. Yeah, so go. you're not plowing the whole long driveway with a no. four-wheeler. But um, so we do have the plow guy. But our concern with the plow guy this year um, has been we the other thing that we did in preparing for winter was we added to our driveway we we had you know where they when they're doing construction when they're replacing roads and they did that locally this summer <clears> for <throat> us it was more in the fall um they near, call it a lot of different things they're called tailings or, right so they take yeah. the old road that they've chopped up and removed and they sell that to people and so we got a couple like three piles of it three dump truck or yeah, yeah three it was three trucks. dump trucks full of of tailings and we had it evened out. The only thing we didn't, we did not have it rolled because um, they're expensive to rent. Those rollers are very expensive to rent. We didn't even have it tapped. And then it kind of cooled on us too fast, whatever. And so it's there. But we're hoping that the, the driveway is still there at the end of the month, <laughs> at the end of the summer, winter. Yes. Oh, it'll be there. It may be dispersed we throughout don't want our it, lawn, I just don't want it but... in my yard because that's why I feel like every year, because half of our driveway is still dirt and we, we put down rocks and it, the rocks end up in my yard at the end of the driveway and right. I, I hate that. So every year I'm yeah. reseeding the same area because the plow destroys that area with all the snow. And so that is something that we will figure out. I will figure that out one day. But uh, yeah, the, the little side thing that I bought this year was a leaf blower. And you think, why would you want a leaf blower when That's you have 80 acres of woods? Like, it's you're, it's useless. But it isn't because you put, I, I, what always happens with us is the leaves would fall right next to the drive, into the, on the driveway, right up next to the house. And once the snow comes, it's really hard to shovel frozen leaves underneath a pile of snow. And I'm like, we got to get the leaves off the driveway before the snow hits. And so that was a, a good thing for me. I think it was a good purchase. And it's fun to sit there and blow it all off. And, and the kids have a good time with that. I think one of the last things we're going to talk about is the garage in preparing for winter. Because this okay. was, an I really wanted this this year. I wanted to be able to park in the garage so I didn't have to scrape I ice and brush snow off my car every single day. So uh, so in order to do that though, we couldn't put wood in the garage. And so we have the second wood shed th yeah. that we, and we had to find other places to put the wood. Uh, we also couldn't put hay in the garage, which is what we've done in the past. So we had to clean out that garage, the barn. That was part of the clean out of the barn so the hay would fit in there. And we cleaned out a lot of the other parts of the garage, like my other scrap wood things put it in the barn to get it out. Right. But the big thing that takes the sp takes place, takes space in the bar in the garage is our lawn equipment. We have two tra lawn tractors, we have a push mower, we have a four-wheeler, we have um, we have this pull behind thing. We have all this equipment that needs to go somewhere. So, we had Jacob and our Amish friend Jacob who built our decks and everything, our barn. He got he built us this small the small garage I call it and uh, and it was, was it in one day or two days I painted that thing? That was a nightmare. I'll never do that again. That was yeah. such a workout to paint that whole thing by myself. But um, the delivery guy who brought it, he was the same guy who brought our barn, and we thought this would be a little easier. It proved to not be easier. He got stuck in the yard, and then mm. he had to get out the mule, they call it, that moves it and yeah. puts it in place. And it's just been, then we had to level it. So you got out with the boys and, and jacked it up with a car yeah. jack and got it level so uh, we could actually get our machines in there. So that cleaned out a good portion of our, we still have the four-wheeler in the garage, but now we can fit at least two cars. And that makes me super, super, super happy because yeah. I 
I just don't want to scrape ice. The sad thing was that our sweet little Jacob Amish friend is moving. He's moving so. so this was the last project he did for us and will yeah. do for us. So we'll have to find another guy. Or actually, I think in the end, the next thing that needs built, we're just going to do it ourselves. I yeah. think I can build a barn by myself. Not a big barn, but like a shed. I can build a shed. Definitely a lean-to. Oh, my gosh. Definitely a lean-to. Because the lean-to will be our next need. Because next year, hopefully, we'll finish the pasture. So there's that. All right. So maybe our next video will be preparing for summer. Or let's get Chris more work. So that, that sounds like a plan. We can pay for that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I think that's it. We, I think we did really, really well in preparing for winter. Of course, time will only tell. Yeah, I know. Did we do it well enough? We got the fireplace cleaned out. We've got... We got, Plenty of wood. We got, I got my overalls. Yeah, you got overalls. So I think yeah, we're so ready. We got good boots and some socks so I can walk out and not freeze my tushies. Or my toes, not my tushy. My toes. And you have multiple tushies? I have multiple. Yeah, it looks like I have multiple <laughs> tushies sometimes, but it's so only one. We're going to work on our tushies. <laughs> All right. Uh, see you later. All right. Thanks for watching. And don't forget to subscribe, please. Smash that subscribe yeah, button. Yeah, and share. All yeah. right. Thanks. Bye.